All right, so it's a bad day here. Monopoly House neighborhood, major earthquake, a lot of damage, a lot of structures that have actually sort of moved from their original position. You see the ground's really disrupted here. Uh, got an aerial view. Uh, it looks kind of like some of the land here is just sort of oozed and flowed downhill. Kind of a bluff here and above that bluff, you know, some of these places are just fine. Complete destruction over here. Uh, fortunately, there's video. I can show you what happened. Uh, what you're seeing there is a model of a lateral spread landslide. Uh, once the shaking begins, part of this model landscape starts oozing or flowing slightly down slope. It's tilted one or two degrees. Uh, the tilt's very, very slight, but it's almost like some of this area just turns into liquid and everything sitting on top of it is just sort of along for the ride. Uh, that's what moves the little monopoly houses from their original position. So they started out really orderly there. They end up jumbled all over the place, tilted, thrown around. And that's something that's quite typical of lateral spread ground movement that's, uh, that's associated with earthquake shaking. The model there is replicating uh, a landslide type that is due to soil liquefaction. There is no liquid here, uh, it's only simulating that type of effect. Uh, the material that's flowing there uh, are the good old glass microbeads. They're nice little spheres. And once the shaking starts and there's acceleration, those little spheres aren't able to push on each other and hold together. Uh, so that's why the uh, that's why the flowing starts. It's kind of useful to see this type of motion uh, actually without monopoly houses on it because then you can see how the failure sort of eats its way up slope and gradually carries away more and more of the landscape where the lateral spread's occurring. And the reason it's only occurring right here in the middle of the model is that's where the microbeads are buried underneath the upper layers. Uh, if the whole model was underlain by the microbeads, the whole thing would just, uh, would just sort of flow away there. And again, sort of the calling card of this type of failure is the evidence of flow. If you actually look in the foreground here of the model, there's like a little lobe of the of the microbeads that have kind of spilled out of the end. And the surface of the ground in the affected area tends to break apart into these small uh, sort of narrow blocks. And those actually tilt as they flow downhill and it produces this really, really distinct pattern. Um, when you see something like this, that, that screams lateral spread. And what's happening is the, the blocks are rotating on little shear planes that actually meet up with the base of the spreading or the, or the sliding area. So the microbeads layer, you can see little bits of the microbeads poking through where the overlying layer has kind of has kind of spread apart there. Uh, the microbeads layer is a pretty significant portion of the layer pack in this model. Uh, there's a pretty thin layer of the, the, the tougher and more brittle material on top of it. And of course, that tough and brittle material is what rotates into these blocks as the microbeads underneath uh, liquefy and flow down slope. So throwing in structures here uh, just to kind of give it like a real world connection. Uh, the houses tilt, they move apart, they started out in, in nice orderly lines there. So there has been very chaotic and variable ground movement. And some of these are tilting forward. The ones here are sort of tilting backwards as blocks are beginning to rotate as they pull away. There's some cracking of the ground up here beyond the failed area. But the little houses over here that aren't on top of that weak and liquefaction prone layer they endured the, uh, the shaking just fine. And sure enough, uh, if you look for real examples of this, you're probably going to see the Turnagain neighborhood uh, near Anchorage, Alaska. This was affected by a huge lateral spread in the 1964 earthquake. And if you zoom in close, you can actually see houses tilting into failed areas. The rotated blocks here again have sort of tilted there. You can see the snow on the ground surface. This is soil that was under the surface that, because of the rotation, is now exposed. Structure is completely destroyed. This is a, this is a bad event. Uh, of course, if you're in a place like this when this is happening, uh, that, that spells trouble. As far as telling where it's going to happen, 
some knowledge of the subsurface is useful. Uh, not every type of sediment is prone to liquefaction during shaking, but a lot of active tectonic areas that are prone to large earthquakes do have accumulation of materials that are prone to this behavior and certainly areas that were glaciated or coastal uh, as well often have materials that will be uh, be prone to liquefaction with shaking. And seeing the the cracks there in particular, and these are, uh, talked about this in other videos, these are more appropriately called scarps because there's, there's up and down relative motion ac um, across them. That's another uh, telltale feature of a lateral spread type event. This is another shot from Alaska in 1964. Uh, I think if you type in lateral spread and earthquake, most of what you're going to see is, is 1964 Alaska. And it's possible to come up with a physical model that looks very much like that, again, depending on how you distribute the liquefaction prone layer underneath there. So we can actually watch that little model form here. At the end, once the shaking starts, failure spreads up slope and block by block, the overlying layer pulls away and starts making its way down the slope and you end up with that very telltale sort of ribbed looking landscape that's actually made up of those little little rotated blocks because of the flow of the underlying material. Uh, I'm sure there have been a lot of examples of this in other places that have experienced major earthquakes, but again, the 20th century example that you're going to see the most of uh, is the 1964 Anchorage event because it was very well documented. Uh, it was possible, of course, at that time to fly over it, take a lot of pictures, and the fact that it interacted with that Turnagain neighborhood where there were a lot of structures provided a, a pretty significant frame of reference for what a failure like this does to the landscape. So if you're looking for information about actual liquefaction, uh, I've got a video on this page that actually does liquefy wet sediment. This is, again, a totally dry model. It's just using different type of materials that respond differently to uh, to that earthquake shaking.